Oh, I'm ready to start working back on the uh, Galaxy. These clips are all, all uh, nice and dry, so I can um, put these on, put that rear molding on if I want. Get all the clips off the wire. And uh, these are the, obviously, I got a little tool here to grind the rivets off for those other stainless steel. I'll just put it in the Dremel. I don't want to run it on the big grinder. Oh, and I got a, my dad gave me his video camera. It's an older one. He hasn't used it in a while. Gave me his old GoPro too. It's just, it's, the, the GoPro he gave me is identical to this one. This is the one I use, um, I was using it in the last video, you know, when I'm videoing what I'm doing on the tripod. That's a Hero 3 Plus. But anyway, yeah, so this thing, I took it out and played around with it. It, it actually works pretty good. And uh, it has a zoom feature, which is kind of nice. Yeah, it gets to where you can't hold it still up close, you know, I mean, I was shining it outside. Maybe, well, I can't even see what I'm videoing there. But anyway, we got another, another camera to play with. And uh, I will... Um, May, may use it to just do the videos around here I don't upload, but we'll see. It is, look at that, it must have been when YouTube was in its infancy. And uh, I got some cardboard, got some new kitchen chairs, and I'm going to put that on the floor to replace the old cruddy cardboard. So I'll, when I have the, both cars out, I'll go through the cardboard and uh, get rid of it. But this is what I got to replace on that stainless steel trim is this stuff right here. I'm in the process of buffing and it comes with all, all the stuff for the trim to attach it. it comes with the staples. To t these go on the door panels. These go on the rear quarter window panels, interior panels. These are interior, these are exterior, so everything for the windows will be new. You know, the door panel side and the, the door side. So that's what I got to take off. And I was buffing this piece here. And these are the little rivets I got to grind off. And there's no way I'm going to get the, uh, you know, my regular grinder there to take them out. So I got my little... Uh, little grinding wheel for my for my Dremel that'll get in there and just grind those heads off so I can get that off and then I can polish finish polishing all the trim up this is coming up pretty darn nice it's it's in really good shape no dents in it it's gonna look good all polished up another thing I got for my dad he has an amazing oil can collection and he had I don't know two or three of these so he gave me one I needed one that I could put the automatic transmission fluid in so when I change the convertible top cylinders I can refill a pump and bleed it out so I can just pump the fluid into the pump with this instead of trying to cobble a funnel with a hose or something just easier so I got that I'll clean it out and put some uh, transmission fluid in it so in the meantime, I'm going to get to grinding these little rivets off. It's hard to see with the camera there. I might have to move it so I can get in there and see. All right, you get the picture. I need to move the camera so I can get right in there and see what I'm doing. Well, there you can see I just ground all the rivets off. 
down flush with the metal and then I just take a little screwdriver where the rivets are and just kind of pop them out. And the trim is off. You can see there's a ground rivet still in there and trim is ready for a little buffing and I didn't damage the, the holes for the new rivets. Yeah, you probably hear the fan in the background. It's been a hot summer here in southeast Michigan. So it's been on a lot. It's been in the 90s. Just about every day it seems like. And so I, I keep the garage door closed. I can keep it around, you know, it, it, sometimes in the morning it's 68, 69 in the garage. And by late evening it might be 77, 78. So if I keep the garage closed it stays uh, cool. But today I don't know, it's only about 80 degrees out, and I just thought it'd be nice to open the garage door. I'm working with some the garage door open. So anyway, here we go. We're going to polish up. This is the part you can see, but as you can see, it'll all polish up pretty easy. So we'll just give the whole thing a polish. Get all that surface rusty looking stuff off. I'll probably do this side too. I mean, you know, why not? It's off the car, right? Might take an extra 10 minutes, but so what, right? I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the wheel. It's kind of a soft wheel. It looks like I'm putting a lot of pressure on it, but I'm just barely touching it. Right, look at all that cleans up. Yeah, it's just easier to take the, the gasket off and polish the trim up this way properly. guess some of you guys like seeing this. The ones that don't, you can skip through this part of the video, but I'm not going to video polishing at all. It takes too long to upload it to edit. But I am going to do this piece and maybe one of the door pieces on video. See, it didn't get this leading edge. I run the wheel that way, so then I take it. Whoops! Take it to this side. Got to be careful of those sharp edges. It'll like this. It'll grab it and want to throw it. But see how that polish sat right there? That's just an easy way to get all the all the bits and pieces completely polished on it. Yeah, it makes a big difference. I, I didn't realize the stainless looked that bad until I started polishing it. I was like, holy mackerel. This side's pretty much all done. Got hand prints on it, but that's not going to hurt anything. They'll come off a little car wax. When I'm all finished, I'll hit this trim with a little car wax. Not really as worried about this the in, inside. This is the part against the door. I'm not gonna go all out on it. Or I should say quarter panel. This is the left rear quarter window trim. 
that just cleans up really nice. So that's like uh, almost like a sealer right there it feels like. We'll have to look in the body manual and see if they recommend putting a sealer there. That's what it feels like. This is the top of the quarter. Maybe so when water runs down there it doesn't run inside the quarter panel here if you have a little sealer on it. So that makes total sense. Good enough. It's got, you know, the marks from the rouge on there, which will all come off the little coat of wax. Yeah, it's going to look good. Alright, next piece of trim will be the left front door. This is with the GoPro 8, so you can see the difference in the... Look at that. Yeah, big difference. And uh, it really looks nice on there. It's going to make all the difference in the world. I'll attach this once it's all buffed out. I'll start attaching this and putting the stuff on there and attaching that. Then I can get to painting this, change this header and paint this and I know I've shown this in the past but for those tubers that are just starting to watch my video I did get a new or another good used header this was from Bill Lane in Phoenix Arizona off one of his parts cars and uh, that I'll clean up and paint before I put it on the car probably in the next couple of days I'll clean that up and he also uh, sent me the hydraulic cylinders so I got I'm gonna flush the fluid it through them and and then install them and then re-bleed the system this is the driver's door and you can see I just ground the rivets until you can't see where they were and then I can just take the screwdriver and find where the rivets are there and this is this uh, how rusty this thing is but anyway we'll just pop this off and uh, buff the trim. Yeah, this piece is just disintegrating. Hope I can get that rivet out. It's ground off. Might have to take a little punch and tap it out. But if I can't pop it out with a screwdriver, it's just so rusty the metal here. Yeah, it's just disintegrating. Alright, I'll just take a little punch to that one. That one's off. Look at that, just, just snapped there. It's so rotten. That one popped out without. Crying on it. All right, there's all but that one rivet. So we'll uh, I'll just grind it a tad more.
Yeah, it's just really ratted out. It should pull right out of there, you would think. All right, I'm just going to get a little black wood and a tiny punch. Well, I don't know, maybe it's... Oh, there it goes. I was going to say, maybe it needs grinding more, but... It definitely knocked it out. All right, that is ready to buff. Look at how ratted out that part of that is. Yeah, that was definitely not reusable. Just a little heads up too, I do, even though it looks nasty, I do wipe them down with a damp or wet cloth so I get all the dirt off so it doesn't scratch it up when, when I'm running it on the buffer. I need to get some more of this stuff. I can put a that, that wheel was originally about that big around. I should uh, replace it too. That's like probably the second or third wheel I've put on that, and you know they last a long time. Those wheels. Probably the last time I put one on it was 30 years ago. I like to get the ends too. You know, I mean, you see them, so why not? Yeah, just doing that a little bit made a big difference. Yeah, it's going to clean up nice. Look at that. Yeah, there's body paint on this too. See right here. I don't. I, I don't know if it shows up in the video or not. But there's, like, when they masked the car when they repainted it years back, they didn't mask it. See the paint flake off. Yeah. So I'll just take my thumbnail or something. The buffing wheel isn't coarse enough. To take that uh, paint over spray from when they masked it off and that doesn't look good when you put the trim back on if you see you know where it was masked that's why I take the trim off the car because no matter how good you mask it you still get paint on the trim and it just doesn't look good I like the trim to be trim so in order for it to be trim you can't have paint on it alright so I'm gonna go to town on this I'm not gonna bore you with videoing it starting to look good all right two more pieces and all uh, trim will be ready to put the rubber on and install and then I can start you know I can put in the vent window assembly fix the wing window on that side and the regulator get the glass in on that door um, look at the rubber is even not much left of it but anyway let me, uh, let me get this piece next and uh, just keep on moving. Hopefully I can get all the trim polished today anyway. Yeah, one more piece of trim and it's all the trim will be buffed. So I'm going to start on this one now. There we go. The rest of the trim is on the car. It's all, this, all polished now. And then I think uh, next I'm going to start putting the, the rubber on. Yeah, I polished it all the way everything you know I mean why not it's off the car it takes an extra 10 minutes 15 minutes maybe all right so there we go um, all polished up now I can like I say I can focus on uh, the weather stripping well today is another day actually a few days later I'm gonna start putting this on the trim and installing the trim on the body I'm putting the rubber on the stainless and it's kind of hard to show but these are the little things that hold it to the 
to the molding and they push through and then it looks like you just spread them maybe punch them stake them with a punch after you're done just to tighten make sure they're tight on there but I can see where the original rubber ended and that ended right there and if you look you can see a little line and it lines up directly with the center of the hole every one of those has that little line and every one of those lines up with the center of the hole that one doesn't but the rest do so with this exactly where the original trim ended here you can see the still see a little bit where it ended that looks like where those holes are centered is where that goes these are where the screws go in that hold the trim to the door. Um, and then the wing window assembly goes in this part here. That's why there isn't rubber up here at this end. So let me get all these clips in and bent over. And it's just hard to, the camera's in an awkward spot. And this is just kind of awkward for me to do because these don't just push into the, through the hole. I gotta actually take a pair of needle nose pliers and just squeeze them slightly as I feed it through into the. It's kind of a pain to do it the way I'm here right now. So let me uh, let me get my phone and I'll get to this. Little rivets are kind of in there, you know. I gotta put like something on here, maybe a punch or something, and push it down and then take something and just tap those over to each side. You can see how this channel is recessed a little bit so those won't hit the door when they're peened over. This is almost one of those two-man type of jobs. This is just a... it's in there pretty good. It's turns but it's peened over completely as far as it'll go and it is tight on there. And it's just like I say, kind of a kind of a difficult. I'm gonna try and prime over a little bit with a screwdriver first. Maybe that'll help. You know, just I'll show you. Maybe I'm going about this all wrong, but I just took a screwdriver in there and just kind of worked those over a little bit, just to kind of. And then I put this against the punch, and then I got to try and hold the trim in place and hold the punch and hit the hammer all at the same time. I might have to wait and do this with another person because this is just this is just too hard to do by myself. It just I can't hold the trimmer. I'm gonna have to find something to hold the trim. I, I just can't do it this way. I'm gonna have to horse around here or wait until I have some help. These ones I was able to peen over. Now I could take a center punch, I suppose, and punch in the center and cut those little ears off. Now you can see the rubber where it fits the window. You know, it just keeps water out of there. And uh, this window's adjusted pretty good, so when I put it down, it still has a little bit of a gap there. This needs to be adjusted, so it goes down just a smidge further by adjusting the stop. No big deal. I just want it flush with the top of the molding. The window over here, when it's all the way down, you can see it's tight against the, the body here. And when you put it off, it's actually a pretty good gap the way it should be. You know, that rubber will fill that. So the way you adjust this, let me get my light and see if I can... Let me find my light. Now hopefully I can show this. So this is the top of the window regulator. That That's part of the window regulator mechanism right there. And I'll lubricate all that stuff up, clean it up. But that's just what rolls the window up and down there. This is the track for the glass over here. See it bolts on the top there and there. So the top is fine, so I don't need to move those. But if you look way down in the... Well... I don't know. Let me put a wrench on it and get in through these holes right here. There's two bolts. There's one. There's the other. 
that's the bracket for the bottom of this and I loosened it up and I'm going to push it outward that way so it brings this window to about there and then I'm going to put the trim on hats it's going together nice that looks nice on there so let me get this window adjusted and then I'll uh, you know so when it's down it's not smashed into the rubber hardcore because the windows are going to and that's about the height the window should be down I think I adjusted the stop on this one that one I need to adjust the stop the moldings all on the rear is done the doors I got to do I'll probably work on them tomorrow but I don't know if I showed this or not but yeah I I lubricated all the mechanism too really good and uh these windows roll up and down like brand new and uh, the weather strip is nice in there all the screws look nice on there this one doesn't this one was part of the there was no screw there for some reason that was part of the trim that one has a screw same with that one that one was part of the trim that one has a screw so some of them on the trim were part of the trim riveted to the trim see that one's riveted screwed riveted screwed the rest of these are all screwed i try and put the the screws so they all just looks neater instead of one one way and one another way i just try and tighten them up and snug them up so they all are kind of consistent and this side i got the window that bottom as far as it would go and it gave me a bit of a gap not quite as much as I would have liked but it works pretty darn nice um, I would have liked it to you know maybe about like that but that's good and uh, when it rolled up it's absolutely perfect so the next is the trim here and then I, I gotta put the glass you can see there's a regulator in there I put the regulator in Th this regulator was bad I had to replace it and uh, so I'll get the glass and the door and get the I think I'm gonna put the glass down in there first before I put this trim on but I might work on this door next thing the glass is already in it get the wing window and get this door all together and working and then i'll work on the driver's door because i gotta fix the wing window on the driver's door but yeah this glass is all in the other side like i say has a new regulator this side i lubricated the regulator but i'm gonna really give it a good lubricating before i put the door panel back on so there we go on this so um I'll tomorrow like I say I'll work on this stuff well I think I might put this uh, video up tonight I don't know how much video I have here time wise it's between two different cameras too I keep the old GoPro on the tripod and I use the GoPro 8 to do all the handheld stuff but also I uh, I got the trim coming for the wheel walls I got 65 trim for the front wheel walls come which is stainless steel and the 66 were anodized aluminum 65 were stainless steel but the rear wheel wall opening is different on the 66 and the 65 the front is the same so it's going to have 65 stainless steel front and 66 aluminum in the rear I started um I don't know if I showed this or not I actually started uh I've been horsing with those uh, these pieces of trim and uh, this is the worst one this is the left front and I've been you know what I got to do now is I got to peel this lip around so I can bump these and then fold the lip and then I'll you know sand it and yeah, that's just really beat up. But I think I'll try and fix these up anyway because they're not available. Once they're gone, they're gone. And these make pretty good cores. So I think I'll eventually bump all these out and uh, clean them up and maybe uh, 
sell them or reanodize them and put them on that we'll see but i'm definitely not getting rid of them because they're not available and i can this one's pretty bad too but i can straighten bump these out and uh have them reanodized if i need to and then you know that's why you see these cars always restored devoid of moldings because none of the moldings are available but anyway that's it for uh on the center cap for the wheel cover i don't know i think i showed those um but yeah we're gonna call it a day i think and i'll make these in a different video so anyway if you like the video definitely hit the like button it'll help buy a top which i i pretty sure i have enough money for top right now so maybe i'll put the extra towards tires it's all from my uh, google adsense here on youtube that the money that i'm going to spend on the top and hopefully the white wall tires and uh i got to get these ones broken down so i can paint the wheels but um if you like the video definitely hit the like button it certainly helps get more views which makes more money and if you want to see this old galaxy with a new top and all done up with white with uh it's not going to have wide whites it's going to have the standard white walls like this car came with i think maybe they're i don't know three quarters of an inch or an inch or so but anyway it's not going to be the big fat ones like that and uh so you know if you want to see this car done up subscribe to my channel hit that 348 engine icon that will subscribe you and thank you for watching my video